Grace and peace to you, my sisters and brothers in Christ. My name is Father Brighton Ward, parish priest for St. Peter and St. Anne's North Abaco, and we thank you for tuning in to our Anglican Daily Devotions on this May 3rd, 2022. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Some words taken from St. John's Gospel, the sixth chapter, reading the 35th verse. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Continuing with our Easter reflections, I draw your attention to the framework of Jesus' ministry in St. John's Gospel. Unlike Matthew, Mark, and Luke, St. John does not give the birth narrative in the traditional formula we are used to. There are no angels, there is no genealogy, nor is there a proclamation from St. John the Baptist. While these events are significant in the life of Jesus, they do not spark the same fire which St. John seeks to kindle in his hearers. Each of the four Gospels are noted by an icon or figure. St. Mark is represented by a lion, representing the proclamation and strong preaching of St. John the Baptist. St. Matthew is represented by a divine human being, showing significant interest in Jesus' humanity, while St. Luke is represented by an ox that represents the sacrificial nature of Jesus. But St. John is represented by an eagle. And as many of you may know, an eagle is a bird that can fly high above all others. And so its symbolic representation for St. John is intended to lift the mind of its readers and hearers. It is with that platform that we are called to internalize what Jesus is saying when he says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. For St. John, Jesus' ministry is predicated on nourishment, both physical and spiritual. This dual ministry can be seen at the wedding in, the, in Canaan, Galilee, the feeding of the 5,000, and Jesus' encounter with the woman at the well. As you and I prepare to go out this day, and wherever we may find ourselves, I ask of you, as I do of myself, to be mindful that the people that we may encounter may not only be in need of an encouraging word or a prayer, but many of them in need of physical nourishment. And Jesus' ministry in St. John's Gospel reveals to us that before we tend to the spiritual, we ought to tend to the physical. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we thank you once again, my friends in Christ. And if this message has 
touched you in any way, we ask you to kindly share with a friend or someone who may be in need. God bless. And I will raise you up, and I will raise you up.